This is an old mine. It was abandoned decades ago. It's deep, dark and partially flooded. Can our rough science team overcome its dangers and penetrate its depths? Depths, 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 depths. Our four pioneering scientists are... Ellen McCauley, an intrepid go-anywhere botanist with a love of all things wild. Mike Bullivant, a chemistry wizard with a wicked sense of humour. Jonathan Hare, the do-it-all inventor, physicist and engineer. And Hermione Coburn, an earth scientist and explorer who never gives up. Their base is an abandoned mining mill way up in the mountains of Colorado. This is High Altitude Rough Science. In the late 19th century, miners came in their thousands to try their luck in these mountains, digging for precious metals. This week, the team have to go underground themselves in search of silver. And that's no easy task. Mines can pose all kinds of potentially lethal hazards. Flammable gases, lack of oxygen and, of course, total darkness. On top of that, these mountains have high levels of radioactive uranium, not something you want to stumble over unawares. So can the team come up with the necessary equipment to allow them to safely explore this mine in just three days' time? Day one, and our rough scientists are taking their first glimpse of the mine. Look down there. Oh, no. Because by the end of day three, you guys are going to have needed to explore that mine and come out alive, preferably. I think first things first, we need a portable light source. Any ideas on that? I can make a torch. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. OK. Maybe something that's waterproof, perhaps. Waterproof <laughs> would be good, because it is... Rugged. It is a bit flooded in there. Mines are famous for being full of quite nasty gases or perhaps not enough <coughs> oxygen. Uh, is there something you can come up with to detect that not chasing wildlife and catching canaries? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll make a miner safety lamp. Hmm? But oddly enough, to do that, we'll need a flame. And then I could contribute a candle. Yeah, good one. Mm. OK. And no buying them in a shop. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'll make one. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure how I'll do that, but okay. by day three you'll have one. Finally, <laughs> and perhaps most importantly, this uh, presence of radioactivity in these mountains. Um, is there any sort of device that you can dream up which is going to tell us about this radioactivity? Yeah, well, I, I know of something that I'd quite like to have a go at, where you actually see the effects of radioactive particles. Okay. So I think that's something I'll... Give that a go. All right. Well, there's quite a lot to do, obviously. We're going to come back here at the end of day three, but I think you should hop foot it to the mill and get going. What do you reckon? Go, go, go. As usual, they can use anything they can find in and around the mill. They have three days to make an electric torch to illuminate their journey into the mine, a radioactivity detector, and turn a homemade candle into a flammable gas detector based on a miner's safety lamp. You see... Up until the beginning of the 19th century, mining was a particularly hazardous operation uh, because they used oil lamps and candles down there to see their way. And those flames from those lamps and candles would, uh, would trigger explosions of the flammable gases that you find down a mine, predominantly methane. And in 1816, a guy called Sir Humphrey Davy invented a, a miner's safety lamp, and it's Davy's design that I'm going to try and copy. Um, but for that, I need a gauze or a fine mesh. I mean, something like this, but a lot finer. Uh, that won't do. Let's go and have a look over here. On challenge day, Hermione will need to detect whether some pieces of rock taken from these mountains are radioactive. So as a geologist, can you look at a rock and establish whether it is indeed radioactive or not? No. I mean, there are some uranium minerals that look quite characteristic, but I still wouldn't be able to say just by looking at a rock. I want something that I can test the rock with. And is there something? There is. What I'm going to try out, first of all, is a cloud chamber. Sounds like something from Back to the Future. Well, actually, it's very simple. I'm just going to make it in this jam jar right. here. And uh, what the cloud chamber will do is show us the track that radioactive particles take as they come out the rock. 
Wow, that sounds amazing. Ellen started on her search for a perfect flame for the safety lamp. So if we need a flame, a really good way to do that in these parts is to go for some beeswax candles. This protective gear should keep me safe. Let's go. That's Mike, Hermione and Ellen busy, but what's Jonathan up to? Now then, Jonathan Hare, this portable, reliable light source. You've obviously got something undergo here. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, the obvious thing is to use batteries. But you, you know what it's like when you have a torch, you try it, and the light's on, and then you go somewhere and it fails. Yeah. Down a mine shaft, that's to be the worst thing. Yeah. So the best thing is to make a little generator. Right. So that we use our own energy. We don't have to rely on, on the battery. So what I've got here is a little yep. thing which spins the magnets. I've got magnets on here. And so if you turn that... Now, if you put uh, a coil of wire near turning magnets, yeah. you induce a voltage into the coils. And that's basically how a generator works. You can see you're making a little voltage. Oh, look at that. That's extraordinary. But the great thing about this is that there's no moving electrical connections. So the magnets are moving, but the coil isn't. OK, so... I'll Why is that important? Well, because the trouble is, if you have moving electrical parts, you can make a spark. Oh, and if we've got flammable gas or anything... That's then... really dangerous. Well, that, in theory, is all looking very good. Well, it's absolutely tiny. This is a very sensitive metre. Right. So this won't power anything. OK. But I need to fiddle around putting much more turns of wire on. It's nowhere near powerful enough to light a bulb. Hermione is ready to work on her cloud chamber, but needs one vital and extremely cold ingredient. Mikey B! What's that? I need your assistance. Yeah. I need to make some dry ice from uh -huh. CO2, if you wouldn't mind having a seat. Mm -hmm. Don the gloves. Pop this on as hey. well. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't look so worried. <laughs> what I've got here is a canister of liquid carbon dioxide under high pressure. If you could just hold that. Actually, hold it there. We don't want any accidents. It's just... <laughs> now, I'm going to release some of the liquid CO2 into here. And as I do so, it's going to expand very, very quickly. And as it expands and evaporates, some of that CO2 will freeze into dry ice. Are you sure about that? Yep, you ready? Yeah. Don't worry. Just a few seconds. Ready? <laughs> All right. <gasps> Look, there we are. Solid calm dioxide, dry ice. And I need this to cool down my cloud chamber. Oh, right. We'll walk again. Well, just don't go anywhere for now, because I need a bit more. I'll just... <laughs> to make a candle for the safety lamp, Ellen's getting help from some local bees. To calm the bees down, she uses smoke, which encourages them to gorge on honey, a defence mechanism they use in the event of fire. While they're busy eating the honey, Ellen can collect the wax. Let's see what we got. Got a lot of bees, so this is a really active frame. Oh, look at that one! It's got its, it's, got its face in. They're bees that are basically emptying the nectar that they've collected right into these wax hexagons. So this probably isn't a good one for me, because all I'm looking for is the wax to make a candle. Beautiful stuff, but not what we're looking for. I'm gonna go for this next one. Hopefully this will not be full of brood, but will be full of honey. Ooh, yeah. Oh, you can immediately tell. There's bees working on it, but a lot less, because they've already filled it with honey. There's no developing bees in here, and they've capped it off with wax. This is exactly what I want. It's the afternoon of day one, and the team's hard at work. Jonathan's doing a reel. Hermione's working on her cloud chamber. But where's Mike? There you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. What are you doing down here in the bowels of the mill? I need a darkened room. I'm playing with flames like Humphrey Davy. Right, now, I need to get my head around this lamp that's not a lamp but is a safety device. Yeah. Explain. Right. Well, so Humphrey Davy 
discovered that when you cool the flame down, mm. you can extinguish it. Right. Well, one way of cooling the flame down is to pass it through a metal sieve. Okay. Because the heat of the flame will be dissipated. It'll be conducted along the metal of the sieve. Right. And dissipated. Right? Okay, that's important. Watch what happens. Wow, it doesn't come out at the all. The flame doesn't pass through at all. If I used a sieve with larger apertures, right. in other words, there's less metal per square inch okay. yeah, to conduct away so the So this one's got, it's got the bigger holes. This has got bigger holes, yeah. less metal. You see, it's not as effective. Oh, the flame's, the coming, flames through coming through really through. quickly. More quickly, yeah. Essentially, a Davy lamp is just a flame within a cylinder mm -hmm. of this gauze. Right. Now, when the Davy lamp is taken down a mine and you find methane, a flammable mm -hmm. gas, mm -hmm. the gas will come through the gauze yeah. and it'll catch fire. Right. But the explosion and the flame it's won't pass back through the gauze. It's contained by the gauze. It's contained by the gauze. What's the next stage for you? It's for me to construct something along the principles of the Davy lamp. You know? Okay, mm -hmm. so finding the right gauze, butchering this poor sieve or <laughs> yes. something like yep, that. that's it. And then all you need is Ellen to come up with her candle. With a candle, yeah. And it's done. Yeah. Brilliant. But a candle won't illuminate a mine. That's Jonathan's task. Okay, well, I've um, experimented with a few coils near the magnets and this one's a thousand turns and it's just beginning to light the bulb. Now I've got provision for two of these coils so that will double the voltage so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get it a lot brighter. I hope so Jonathan. Hermione's found an old aircraft dial with a needle that was coated in small amounts of radioactive paint to make it glow in the dark. This will be perfect for testing her cloud chamber. So am I looking at a cloud chamber? You are. Not one that's working properly yet, but nevertheless a cloud chamber. OK, so tell me what the sort of component parts are if I want to make my own. Well, essentially, we are filling the cloud chamber here with alcohol vapour. In this, we're using just a pad soaked in alcohol. Right. And I've put it on some dry ice. And because it's got a very, very cold bottom down here, it means near the bottom, the air of the chamber has become super saturated with alcohol vapor. And what that means is it's just on the brink of condensing out and forming little droplets of alcohol. But it can't because it hasn't got anything to condense onto. OK, but how does that vapor then tell you that whatever you've put in there is radioactive or not? Well, this is the clever bit. Mm -hmm. If you have a radioactive source in there, it emits little particles, high-energy particles of radiation. And they travel through the air and cause, if you like, leaving a trail of destruction. And it's that trail of destruction that the alcohol vapour can condense onto. So in the wake of the particles, you see little wispy trails of cloud. So that's why it's called a cloud chamber. Absolutely brilliant. So, presumably you haven't got anything in there that's radioactive at the moment because there's nothing no, happening. No, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm oh, just Miami. struggling a little bit to set up a nice super-saturated layer. OK. And, and, and to actually visualise those particles. What doesn't help is that the sun's gone behind a cloud. So you need a really <laughs> bright source We need a strong of light. light source. And what I want to do is use the sun. Uh, perhaps tomorrow morning to see into the chamber more clearly and, and then pick up these clouds. Hmm. It's not doing anything, is it? It's the end of the first day and not everyone is progressing as they'd hoped. <laughs> My cloud chambers were not quite as spectacular as they could have been. A few teething problems, but... Um, the rest of the rough science team are just making me feel really optimistic because apparently this isn't unusual. It's the classic rough science situation where I've got the generator working, but it's not nearly as good enough for anything. I mean, it's getting the light to just light, so it's absolutely useless, but it's showing the principles. So tomorrow I've got to try and muck around to work out how I can get some decent light out of this thing. Otherwise, we're going to be lost in the mineshaft. <laughs>